Well, praise the Lord. This is Mark Irvin. I'm so glad to be with you again to bring you another message of faith, hope, and love. We're teaching right now on the faith life. What is the faith life? Paul wrote to the Corinthians and he said, for we walk by faith and not by sight. Hebrews 11, 1 says, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Romans 10, 17 says, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Ephesians 2 verse 8 says, for by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. And we can go on and on and on with different scriptures that talk about faith. Faith is the life of the believer. Father, I just pray in the name of Jesus that you would bring forth this message in a way that each and every person could understand. I pray that you would give revelation right now. Speak through me, Father. Speak into the hearts of each and every person that is listening to this message. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You can open your Bible to Romans, the 10th chapter. Romans, the 10th chapter. And remember... We said that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And we have seen that there is faith that comes from the outside in to people that are receiving the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. For the first time, they hear the word, or second time, third time. Many times people hear the salvation message several times, and then finally it, they, they make a decision. And when they make the decision... The Lord Jesus Christ becomes their Lord and their Savior, and they are born again. And that's what we see here in Romans 10, in verse 9 and 10. It says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. We said that word saved there is not only in reference to being born again, but it's all of the benefits that go along with being born again. One of those benefits is physical healing in our bodies. Another benefit is to be able to put our hand to something and to prosper. You know, the, the Bible says that God supplies all of our needs according to his riches in glory. The glory of God is on the inside of us, and this is what gives us the ability to prosper. You see in the Old Testament, when the glory of God was put out in Obed-Edom's home, even though Obed-Edom was was not uh, a Jew, that, that home was put there, uh, or that Ark of the Covenant was put into his home to, to be a hiding place for the Ark of the Covenant. And it was the Ark of the Covenant that contained the glory of God. And the Bible says that his whole house was blessed because the Ark was on the inside of his house. Well, anyway, the glory of God is within us when we are born again. All these things are imparted into us when we are born again. And that's what this word save means, talking about deliverance. Thank God you're no longer on your way to hell. You're on your way to heaven. It's talking about safety. And thank God we have God's angels that watch over us to protect us and keep us in all of our ways. Jesus prophesied in Luke 17 and verse 21 that the kingdom of God would be within us. The love of God is placed within us. All of these things are placed on the inside of us when we receive Jesus Christ as our Savior, when we are saved. And so it says in verse 9, again, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Notice verse 8. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith. God's word is called the word of faith. Why is God's word called the word of faith? Because when God spoke it out, it came out of belief. It is truth. God believes what he says comes to pass. He doesn't question it. He doesn't have to think twice about it. Automatically, when he says it, what he says he believes comes to pass. And, and you know, the Bible says that the word of God is a two-edged sword in Hebrews 6 and verse 12. The two-edged sword actually in the Hebrew means a two-voiced sword. 
Well, when the word of God came out of God, that was the first voice. And then God's word is meant to get into your heart, into your spirit, and for your mouth to be the second voice. When God spoke it out, he believed it. It comes to pass. When God's word gets into your heart, you believe it, you speak it, it comes to pass. This is the way it works. And this is exactly what verse 9 says, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth, the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Now notice verse 11. For the scripture saith that whosoever believeth on him should not be ashamed. For there's no difference between the Jew and the Greek, and the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now notice here in verse 14. Now here's the point. Faith comes, Romans 10, 17 says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. In order for us to be born again, someone came into our life and they shared the gospel with us. They preached. They 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 shared the, the word of faith with us. And we made a decision to believe that word that someone ministered to us and we were born again. But not only is this faith comes from the outside to the unbeliever in order for them to be born again, it's the same way with you and I. Once we are born again and we saw have seen this in previous teachings, teaching God's faith is put in us. You have God's faith in you. You don't have a faith problem in your spirit. Your spirit is perfect. Your spirit contains all of the nature of God. Your spirit contains all of his character, all of his ability. God operates through faith and God put his faith in you to be activated in your life. Well, how does that faith? You see, for us, faith doesn't come from the outside in. The word comes from the outside in. But what happens for you and I, we receive God's word. God's word comes into us and then faith comes up. It comes up out of our spirit. That's why Jesus talked about drinking from the well of water within us. All of the ability of God is on the inside of us. You are a perfect, recreated human spirit. God lives on the inside of you. You're not lacking anything in the spirit. What's in you in the spirit simply needs to come forth into your soul and out into your natural life. Now, look at this. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him in whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. It's for... Isaiah saith, Lord, who hath believed our report? To obey the gospel is to believe the gospel. To believe the gospel is to act upon the, the gospel. Who hath believed our report? So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I like this in verse 18. How, but I say, have they not heard? Yeah, yes, verily, their sound went into all the earth. Wow, this is a prophetic word. God's word going to all the earth. God gives everybody the opportunity to be born again, every person the opportunity to receive his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, as Savior, and to receive this all-inclusive package of salvation where all of the blessing of God is. And, and, you know, when, when I read this verse, I, I, this is exactly, this, this, this pricks my heart because this is uh, what God has placed on the inside of our, of our ministry to do, and that's to go to nations all over the world, and that's exactly what we are doing. But I say, have they not heard? Yes, verily, their sound went to all the earth. Thank God for the Internet where we can go to all the world, to many nations all over the world. Thank God for all of you that are out there sharing the gospel on a regular basis. Thank God for all this technology that we have, television and and. Uh, and CDs and, and MP3 players and all these things. This is God's uh, word 
through all this technology that he has given this generation to go to all the world. Isn't that powerful? Wow. Have they not heard? Yes, barely their sound went into all the earth and their words unto the ends of the world. That ought to be our vision. Now, so faith comes by hearing. Go with me to Mark, the 11th chapter. And this is another one of those foundational verses, one of those foundational teachings that we have in the Bible pertaining to the faith life. In Mark, the 11th chapter, we have an example. This literally happened. This is not just a story. This is literally something that happened through the perfect example of faith, the perfect example of a person walking in this faith. And that is the Lord Jesus Christ. Everything Jesus said came to pass. Every place that Jesus went was the perfect will of God for him to go. Everything that Jesus did was God working through him. Everything that Jesus said, God was speaking through him. You understand, Jesus was completely yielded to the will of his Father, to the flow of the Holy Ghost. Jesus lived a perfect faith life. Wow. Now, in Mark, the 11th chapter, I want you to notice what it says in verse 12. It says that on the morrow, when they were come from Bethany, he was hungry. Yes, even Jesus' body got hungry. And seeing a fig tree afar off having leaves, he came, if happily he might find anything thereon. And then when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves for the times of figs was not yet. And Jesus answered and said unto him, No man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. And his disciples heard it. Now, isn't that interesting? Jesus here speaks to a fig tree. Notice. And in, in first of all, it says uh, in verse 12, And on the morrow, when they were come from Bethany, he was hungry. So Jesus was hungry. He saw a fig tree afar off, and, and it was... Um, if, if, the, if the fig tree had leaves on it, it was supposed to be producing fruit at this time. It says, And seeing a fig tree afar off having leaves, he came, if happily he might find anything thereon. He was excited, you know, well, you know, I'm hungry, and, and here's a nice fig tree, and, and I'll be able to eat. And he found nothing but leaves, for the time of figs was not yet or actually it, it's talking about how that this tree was not producing figs at this time and jesus answered and said unto it no man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever and his disciples heard it what does it say jesus answered jesus answered there was something coming out of this fig tree you know, and this is the way the enemy works. The devil will use negative things in this world to speak things. Gee, you know, the tree didn't talk, but there was a thought that came into Jesus. It was a negative thought, probably a thought, well, Jesus, you're not going to eat today. You know, ha ha, Jesus, you came, you thought there was food on this tree to provide for your hunger and you're not going to eat today. I don't know. There was some kind of negative thought that was coming to him because of this situation. And what did Jesus do? He spoke. He answered. And that's the key right now to live in this life in victory. When the negative thoughts come where we learn not to receive those thoughts, but to speak something to speak against those thoughts, to speak the word of God instead of allowing those thoughts to have a place in our life. That's why Jesus talked in another place where he said, you take the thought when you say it. You know, if Jesus would have looked at the disciples and said, well, I guess we're not going to eat today because after all, there's no fig on this tree and I don't know what we're going to do and complain, complain and all these different things, then that's what would have came to pass. But instead of that, Jesus spoke he answered that tree he spoke against those negative thoughts and he cursed that tree and here is the way that faith works all right let's continue on to verse 20 in verse 20 it says and in the morning as they passed by they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots notice 
when Jesus spoke to that tree, they didn't see immediate results. And sometimes that happens. You speak things, you say things, and you don't see immediately results. But because you spoke the word out in faith, and in this situation, Jesus cursed the tree. There are times that in faith we curse things. When I pray for people that are sick, that have cancer in their body and to body, and tumors and things like that. I don't speak the blessing to that cancer. I don't speak the blessing to those uh, cancer cells on the in per, on the inside of that person. I curse them. I command them to die in Jesus' name. And because I believe what I say and I confess it, it comes to pass. Hallelujah. Isn't that great? It says, And in the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter, calling to remembrance, saith unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree which thou cursest is withered away. And Jesus answering said unto them, Have faith in God, or have the faith of God. Here it is right here. Have the faith of God. This is how the faith of God that's on the inside of every single believer works. And so when we go back to Romans 10 and verse 17, where it says, Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And then in, in the verse uh, Hebrews 10 and and. Um, Verse 8, where it says that it's the word of faith that we preach. What do we find out through those verses? We find out that faith comes. Faith is going to come forth in your life as you hear God's word. So, you know, if you need a physical healing in your body, what is it that you're going to need to hear the word on? You're going to need to hear the word on healing. And God's word is loaded with healing scriptures. And as you hear those scriptures and hear those scriptures and hear those scriptures, and maybe it's the same one, maybe it's a few, and you know, maybe, and, and I mean, really, there's, there's, there's no excuse for this generation of believers not to be loaded with the word of God. There's so much good teaching out there that you can hear people that will teach you about healing people that will teach you about how to prosper Te people that will teach you about how to sow your finances and then God multiply your finances people that teach you about love and all these different things. We have so much that God has given this generation. But if you have an area in your life that is, uh, you know it's God's will for that area to change, you know that it's God's will for something to come to pass in your life, but it isn't yet coming to pass, then it then it's important. And, and you don't, you're not, you know, you, there's some doubt in there. It's important that you hear the word of God about that. If you need healing, focus on healing. If you need to increase in finances, focus on finances. If you're having a problem with unforgiveness toward another brother, sister in the Lord or somebody out there in the world, it's important that you hear things about love. As you hear God's word, it brings his faith forth and then you can walk in that promise. Well, that's all the time we have today. Listen again as we continue on with this series, The Faith Life. This is Mark Irvin.